Greg Gallagher is an AVP and head of well-being at Affinity Federal Credit Union. He's working to help people reduce financial anxieties and make good financial decisions. Welcome to the show, Grant. Thanks for having me, George. Yeah, excited to have you on. Tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Sure, happy to do so. Uh, so I'm I'm a Jersey boy, born and bred. Uh, I live here with my wife of nearly a decade, Katie, and I'm a proud father of two uh, three-year-old twins. Um, love to eat, love technology, love gadgets when I find time for that, not parenting three-year-old twins. Um, but I've been a uh, credit union member and advocate for the majority of my life. Um, you know, for work at Affinity, I, I wear a lot of hats. You know, I'm, I'm in charge of our public relations, our political and regulatory advocacy, financial education. But, you know, most of all and most importantly, um, our financial well-being programming and content, um, which covers a lot of different areas, a lot of different uh, platforms, technology, education, advice. Um, but it's really, you know, become not only my work, but also my passion. Well, I appreciate that. So are you a Springsteen kind of a person, Bon Jovi? You know, it's it's interesting. My my wife is because she grew up with her parents being that marriage, very much that generation. My parents are a little bit older, so I grew up in more of a Beatles household. Oh. Um, but I I do appreciate both both uh, decades and and uh, types of music. You know, you, you can't live in New Jersey pretty pretty constantly, no matter. I was going to say they, they probably wouldn't <laughs> let you stay. So, right on. So financial well being, that's a a, yeah. a great term. What is that? What does it mean? So it's really looking at the emotional side of finance. Um, you know, we're in a new age of finance where, you know, technology is really great and there's lots of automation, things that you can do to really manage the basic stuff. Uh, you know, there's apps to manage your budget. There's apps to manage your notifications, keep you up to date on payments, deposits, simplifying your bills. But when even with all that help and all that technology, finances are still a major source of stress for, for most people. Um, and it's because they're trying to tackle something very technical and logical when they're emotional beings. You know, money money is, is very uh, dollars and cents. You know, there's no gray area most of the time. But for people, when they're dealing with it, they have a lot of emotions. They feel about these different things. So it's really important that we take that step back and look at it through the lens of what money means through the lens of an emotional person. You know, we're, we're all emotional beings, no matter how much we try to, you know, be rational. And, you know, our goal is really when you're looking at the money, what are the upsides? How, how is it a means to achieve your financial dreams Versus that source of stress that so many people, you know, find it to be, um, you know, if you're really just looking at your money from a big old bucket standpoint, there's never going to be enough. There's never going to be enough time. There's going to be lots of unknowns to be prepared for. Um, but what we really want to do is just help people understand their, their money through that context of what's important to you, what matters, how can we help you figure out how to get there in a way that's healthy and sustainable and manageable, because that's one of the other things that people run into is they, again, take a very logical approach to budgeting. But at the end of the day, they have those temptations to splurge a little bit, get something, you know, spend a little bit extra money on something, um, and it derails their plan. And that's really demotivating and, and hurts them both in you know, short, medium and long term goals, you know, it's uh, and, and unfortunately, when some people fall off the horse, they have a hard time getting back on. So, you know, we really want people to feel good about their finances, feel good about their financial life and, you know, come up with ways to approach it. Um, that's reducing stress and, and really just allows them to live their, their best financial life. I appreciate all that. You know, it's true, right? It's like I do yeah. things. Not because they make the most sense, but because I feel like doing it, you know, like everything. Yeah. I chose to get a cup of coffee because I felt like doing it, not because I need, I felt like I needed the caffeine and the clothes that mm -hmm. I wore and everything else. It's because I feel like doing it. So why would money be any different? Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like the number one advice of when you're going grocery shopping is don't go when you're hungry because mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, succumb to those impulse buys. And that's just like the number one that 
everyone kind of can relate to is is coming across that when they're when they're hungry that will to resist that bag of chips or that thing that looks so good that you know is so terrible for you it's gone you know you you have no no resistance but it's you know planning in advance figuring out how to kind of hack your emotional state how to you know get around those things or simply budget into your life to be able to indulge once in a while you know you're you you only live once you're only young once you know you want to be able to enjoy your money and enjoy your financial life when you still have the full capability to do so and you know you don't know how much time you have on this world so it's not that you should throw all caution to the wind but don't expect to enjoy your life and delay it for you know 20 30 years some people think of you know retirement as as their their golden age of when they're going to do all the fun stuff well are you going to have the health to do it at that point? Are you going to be mobile enough to do it at that point? You know, you you don't know. So you got to kind of think of all that and come up with a plan that lets you enjoy your life to the fullest in the time that you have and, and you know, manage your money in a way that works for you. I love that. That makes a ton of sense. I don't know that I've ever thought about. Um, certainly, I know that wisdom of don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry, but how do we satiate our 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 financial desires to consume? And you talked about maybe building that into your budget, just yep. knowing that we want to buy things and consume things. So I'm setting myself up for failure if I'm just building this really strict thing that there's 0% chance that I'm actually going to follow. And then when I trip up and I don't follow it because there's no way I was going to, it's demotivating and everything else you've been talking about. Yeah. And, and you know, some people call it planning for failure, contingency planning, you know, but but what I like to think of it as is really it's prioritization. It's, you know, what's really important to you. And if your daily, you know, seven dollar cup of Starbucks coffee is what really brings you joy. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> that's what's important to you. And what's what matters is that you sit there and you think about what matters to get you through your day, what helps you sustain your happiness, and is it worth it? I mean, I I myself am, you know, I enjoy fancier coffee on occasion. Um, didn't like the price tag associated with it, so I invested in some of my own equipment at home. You know, I have an espresso maker, I have a coffee grinder, and yeah, up front, it was a little bit more expensive, but over, you know, two years, it's probably going to cost me half as much as I would have if I got that cup of coffee every day. So it, it's really thinking about what matters to you and being purposeful in your planning and your spending and having that wiggle room, um, you know, and, and listen, we, we all make mistakes. We all, you know, fall off track. We all lose our, our motivation, but that's really just the time for you to take a step back and look at what you put together because life changes. You know, what was important to you six months ago? Yeah, you failed what your goal was from six months ago, but maybe that's not what's important anymore. Maybe maybe you are in a different place in your life and something else is super important. And it's time to just sit down and kind of rework your plan, refigure it out. Um, and, you know, the, the best time to do it is, is today. Uh, you know, you don't want to sit on that because a lot of people think, you know, that there's a right time to do anything. And when it comes to your finances, usually the best time is is now and, and not waiting because- the longer you put it off, the longer you're just kind of stuck in that holding pattern and potentially getting in a worse financial situation um, when, you know, you could take action today and start kind of reaping those benefits now. That's well said. Planning for humanity, building that in. <laughs> Maybe think about when we go to the doctor and I don't know about you, Grant, but sometimes I feel like I'm not totally truthful with the doctor and mm -hmm. that's not good for the doctor. It's not good for me. And I sort of imagine it's not dissimilar when somebody talks to a financial professional of some kind. Um, but just, you know, let's just be honest about this. We're here and I'm interested in getting over there with my money. Let's create a, a plan that's realistic and actually you're going to follow. George, you, you are spot on where there is a stigma around talking about your money. People feel guilty about what they think are bad decisions. Um, but the reality is when you talk to somebody who's a financial professional, they've seen it all. You know, they they there's no surprises there. Their goal is to really understand what matters to you and how they can get you from point A to point B. Now, 
if you're talking to somebody who takes a financial well-being approach, they're going to look at all those things that are really important to you, you know, plan for, for those contingencies, help you kind of figure out what that plan looks like instead of that completely, how do you get from your goal in the shortest period of time with whatever amount of sacrifice and suffering is required, you know, because that's kind of your traditional logical approach of, you know, you need to pay off your debt as soon as possible and you're going to scrimp on everything. You're not going to go out to eat anymore. You're not going to have any fun. You know, you're, you're going to cancel all your subscriptions, uh, but you're going to be debt free in, in two years. Um, it's just not realistic and, and it's not sustainable. You have to be honest in those conversations. Um, and the same thing goes when you're talking with, with your family and your friends about finances, there, there's still a huge taboo from that perspective and people don't like to to talk about money. And, you know, George, I'll be honest, I don't know when this is airing, but, you know, we're right in the holiday season and it's a huge source of stress uh, for many people because they they don't want to talk about expectations. They don't want to talk about potentially cutting back if traditionally they've had this big party and they've had this huge meal and they've had these really awesome gifts. Um, but maybe people are in your life aren't expecting that. You know, maybe it's a nice to have, and if you're you're in a tough financial place, just having that conversation about, you know, what really matters around the holidays could put you in a better place where you're not stressing about this ambiguous expectation um, that's not actually there. So it's really important just have those conversations with the people around you to understand what what is actually expected, you know, what actually is the financial situation. And, you know, people are understanding if if it's a tough year and, and you want to cut back, you know, maybe it's lesser gifts, maybe it's doing, you know, a, a gift swap, secret Santa kind of thing where you're buying fewer gifts. People are open to it. You know, it's a tough financial time right now. And you're probably not alone. Starting that conversation is probably going to be well received. I think that that's such an important point. Um, and it's probably always been true. I know that I could think back to um, Christmases and holidays um, and just, just in the past, just with our family where we said, you know what, we're just not in a place where we can buy presents for all the cousins and all the kids. And yeah. when we brought that up to everybody, they're like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. You know, mm -hmm. because, <laughs> you know, we, we, we all have our priorities, hopefully. And uh, it doesn't mean we need to be doing the same thing we've always done. But it's tough because our egos can get in the way of that. Yeah. And and it's it's just that there's a taboo there where, where people don't want to let people down. They are afraid that if they express any sort of financial hardship, people are going to look at them as a failure. But no, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you're making. People are still going to find financial struggles. They're still going to find a hard way to, you know, manage their money and, and stress about it. So, you know, everybody, no matter where you are on, on that pay scale is probably open to that conversation. And, and, you know, cause let's, let's be honest. I mean, the holidays, it's like, there's travel, there's gifts, there's food, there's entertainment. You know, it's like you can you can find a budget, big or small, for the holidays, no matter what you do, and it can just keep going up and up. But you know, you need to be realistic about it, and, and you need to be open to that conversation, and and not feel that it's uh, you're you're a failure just because you're looking to cut back. Well said. So what is what is what are some entry points or on ramps, however you want to kind of think about it? Somebody says, you know what? I've just not been paying attention to my money. How do I move from that to I want to get started? So, you know, it's it's finding an organization that you can have that conversation with. Um, you know, financial planners are are usually a great source of that. A lot of credit unions have adopted this financial well-being approach. Um, obviously, Affinity Federal Credit Union can can help you with that. Um, but it's it's really just taking that thoughtful, intentional approach to your finances, where you're setting up short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals, where you're not going to face a lot of stress and pain about it. And, you know, it's, I like to say anybody can do it, but realistically, it's a lot easier if you use the help of a professional because they can help you contextualize. And that's one of the other things is, you know, when you find yourself in, in a tough financial spot, people, it's usually the first time they're in it. So they don't know if it's a big problem, if it's a small problem, how to get out of it. So, you know, 
it's reaching out for that help at, at an organization like a credit union or affinity where they can help you work through that, help reduce the stress, come up with a realistic timeline, a realistic budget, a realistic approach um, that you know lessens that pain. Um, you know, one of the nice things about credit unions in general is we're member owned. So we're not for profit. You know, we're our our main goal is to support our membership and support the people that come to us looking for help. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not, we're not just trying to sell them things and push product. We're trying to improve their financial lives. So, you know, that's really my my rally call is, you know, look for a credit union and, and get help from them. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. I like the idea of realistic and sustainable because that's what we want. You know, I don't want to do these yo-yo kind of a thing where I lose weight and I put it back on and I get out of credit card debt and I go back in. And that's kind of what we've been talking about is let's find something, let's create a plan that's actually going to work for you with the wiggle room or whatever term you want to use to be a human being. Yeah, the, the, the comparison to a diet is is spot on because so many people have these big ambitions and try to cut back everything. But no, you got to you got to factor in your cheat day into your into your diet. I mean, same thing with your budget. Yeah, can't be perfect all the time. No more pizza and ice cream for me ever again. <laughs> Except for 3 days I'll later it when, when I, I see it. Eat pizza and ice cream. <laughs> well, Grant, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how can they interact or engage with Affinity Federal Credit Union? Well, thanks for having me on, George. Um, you know, our, our main platform, we we do have a podcast that I'm a co-host on. It's the Wellbeing in Your Wallet podcast, and it's available on all major platforms. Um, you can find it on affinityfcu.com. Um, we also have more information about credit unions, how to join, um, as well as we have a, some good financial well-being information in our blog there as well. Um, if you want to find me, I'm on most of the socials at the Grant G. Um, or on LinkedIn in my full name. I think I'm probably the only Grant Gallagher out there that works at a credit union. So you should be able to find me pretty easily there. Um, but this was this was great. Thanks for having me on, George. Yeah, it's a pleasure. If you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Grant your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, check out the Wellbeing and Your Wallet podcast. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go to AffinityFCU. Dot com and check out the great resources that Grant's been talking about. And if you like the approach that we've been talking about, get in touch. Find him on the Grant G um, on social media and on LinkedIn. And I will link all of those in the notes of the show. Thanks again, Grant. Thanks, George. Till next time, remember, do your part by doing your best. <laughs>